The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome to the sounds of suspense, to the fear you can hear. Relax and listen to the strange tale of a strange man, though no more strange than anyone who has suffered what you might call a mutilation of the soul. And who of us has not, at one time or another, suffered such a mutilation? What means did we use to restore ourselves? How quickly did we recover? How well did we heal? The answers vary even as we vary. One man's answers are revealed, we trust, in the story which follows. I'm cold. So oh. am I. It's the darkness I mind the most. Not to be able to see you. Oh, touch me. That would help. Oh, my God, where are you? Right here. Right here. I can't find you. Keep... Talking, keep talking. Oh, here, here, here. Oh, here. Oh, here you are. Oh, darling, don't let go. Never. Oh, never. Never. Our mystery drama, The Deadly Hour, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In 1919, someone had a big idea. Let's help youth understand big business by starting them in small businesses of their own. And Junior Achievement was born. Each group elected a board of directors, chose a product, set up a production line, sold stock, and went into business. That year, 314 students made and sold products and learned the business of business. Today, Junior Achievement has grown to nearly 200,000 members. Junior Achievers are designing and marketing their own products and services, from cutting boards to printing. They're organizing sales efforts, writing marketing plans, calculating profit and loss. Running these small businesses helps Junior Achievers understand how big business works. Support Junior Achievement, where youth learns the business of business. Call your local Junior Achievement office. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Ken Driggs of Salt Lake City, Utah. Yes? Mrs. Driggs, my name is Ted Brown, and I'm calling for Campbell's Soup. And we're calling ladies in the Salt Lake City area asking if they'd like to sing the Campbell's Soup jingle. <laughs> Come on, you're kidding. No, honest, I'm not. And if you sing the Campbell's Soup jingle for me, why, I'd love to send you a case of Campbell's tomato soup. All right, but if I sing it and you don't send it, I'll be awfully disappointed. Well, you just sing it and you see. Okay, it goes, mmm, good, mmm, good. That's what Campbell's soups are, mmm, good. That was just marvelous, really. And we're going to send you a case of Campbell's tomato soup. <laughs> are you kidding? I'm not kidding. How cold does it get in Salt Lake City, by the way? Below zero sometimes, but if you like skiing, you don't mind. Uh huh. When it does get cold, good hot Campbell's soup warms you up. Yeah, that's right. Now you enjoy yourself, you hear? All right. Bye bye. Bye. The preceding recorded message was selected from random phone calls. A person who seems strange we call grotesque, incredible, not to be believed. We make a feeble effort to deny that he could exist. But he does exist. There he is before our eyes in all his strangeness. We do not believe in him because we do not know him. Because once we know, we will have to believe. And this can be a long and painful process. Listen now to the story of Martin Jerome. See if you can believe it. Mr. Jerome, I only consented to see you because your letter sounded quite desperate. 